Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So after doing this for, geez, almost four years, uh, occasionally while recording a video, I will say, number one, I'm pretty sure I tackled this topic exactly, almost word for word, with almost the same title and probably the same thumbnail a year or two ago. Or even worse, and I did a video on this subject and I said the exact opposite uh, in a video before. And uh, I kind of did that. So I did a video the other day uh, where I was talking about how, you know, it's uh, SJWs have been in charge for about six years now. And they have no classics uh, to show for it. To which people said, what about Wicked and Divine and Saga? And then I looked it up and I literally have a video title. It's like, these are the only SJW classics. Uh, but I was reminded of this while talking to uh, someone and they brought this up and I said, yeah, that's a common thing for people to bring up, which I actually brought it up like two years ago. But then uh, I thought about it some more and I think they don't because as time goes by, we are redefining or at least uh, narrowing what a social justice warrior is. It doesn't mean liberal. not It doesn't mean liberal at all. It doesn't even mean progressive. Um, and I eventually came to a very, very simple conclusion. You can tell if something is SJW or not, a book, whether you are allowed to like it or not. If you saying, I don't like this book, gets you labeled by the creators or whoever as some sort of isterphobe, that's how it's SJW. SJW books have an element of coercion, of social pressure, of emotional blackmail. Any book that you are allowed to like or not like is not SJW. They do some kind of traditional SJW things in Saga. You have the uh, protector woman and then the nurturer father, uh, things like that. I mean, I still, uh, to this day, every couple weeks, <laughs> somebody will comment on a video from four years ago where I uh, reviewed, it was the characters from Saga went to abortion town <laughs> And this was like a lower priced introductory issue. So I was complaining. And they're like, well, you don't understand these five other storylines. I'm like, bro, this is supposed to be a jumping on point. It should be very easy to understand. Oh, or they should explain those plot points. Now, you might say, well, oh, it's for different, you know, different uh, people. You know, if you're this group and you say it, you, you say you don't like it. But uh, I've talked to so many <laughs> black creators and fans and they talk about the awkwardness of you know going to a convention and you got someone there and they're selling you know captain blacktavius africa man and even as a black person they are forced to like it but there's a pressure there's a basically a coercion a pressure to like all forms of uh sjw content and if you don't like it you're an ist or a phobe or something else. Um, but then uh, I was talking to someone and it was a creator and they were talking about the, uh, the real pitfall of this is that you can now have an entire generation of creators who when their book is failing or failed or when it is criticized, instead of looking at themselves and looking at the work and saying, oh, I did something wrong. I could have done this. They just go, oh, no, um, the customers are bigots. So, yeah, not really my fault. SJW content hurts everyone. For consumers, you get defamed if you say you don't like something. For retailers, you get emotionally blackmailed into ordering unsellable and unreturnable garbage. And for pros, you get an easy excuse to keep yourself from growing. Well, if they said they don't like it, it's because the lead character is black and they hate black people. I don't need to improve in any way, shape or form. So anyway, just a short video about to get back to work. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.